this this is a political conference, not a church service. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Rita. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you are enjoying your summer. So let's get into this. I want to talk today about how I think the MAGA movement can be dangerous. Let's get into this. So I am wary of any movement where Jesus is not the center. Because anytime you have a movement, you necessarily have to have a charismatic leader in the movement who inevitably becomes an object of worship, worship for the people in the movement. Now, I am coming from a place, if you are not familiar with my channel, I am coming from a place of somebody who is a Christian. And I never call myself a Christian conservative simply because I feel like that's an oxymoron. If you are a, Christ, a Christian, by default, you have conserved, you want to conserve the word of God. You want to conserve biblical values, actual biblical values, not made up ones um, or ones that are right in your own eyes, but actual biblical values. So I am a Christian. So yes, I vote for, I vote conservatively. Although there is some nuance in there because people are not one dimensional, right? However, in this MAGA movement, there are a lot of purist in there. There are a lot of self-righteous people who have, I think, created a religion out of this movement and have, and have some views and, or an unspoken picture of what they think people in this movement should look like. And who's going to take over after Trump, J.D. Vance with his Indian wife? Behave like, sound like, uh, and dress like, the whole nine yards. The Republican conference is happening in my great green state of Wisconsin and people on social media are freaking out because Amber Rose was one of the guest speakers. But most importantly, I'm a mother. My whole world revolves around providing for my children, keeping them safe and giving them an opportunity for a better life. That's something that unites all American parents. Whether we're Republicans, Democrats, conservatives, or liberals, we all want a better country for our children. Now, some of you might not know who Amber Rose is. She is a um, person in the, in, in the entertainment industry. My understanding, I believe she at some point dated Kanye West, often scantily clad. And she was also a promoter of the thing. The feminist march was a few years, some years back called the Slut Walk. And she has since had a political awakening. I didn't say religious because I don't know that it is. Remember, uh, the MAGA movement or the Republican Party or conservatism, conservatism does not, it is, is not a synonym for Christianity. Just so we're all clear, because I think people aren't clear. But anyway, she has had this awakening, apparently. Um, she spoke with her dad. And so she's had an awakening where she's no longer progressive. And she's realizing she has more conservative values. Okay, great. She gave a speech. It was fine. She didn't come out on the stage naked. She was fine. Oh, my goodness. Some of these uh, purists came at her, uh, just went all went all in on her, slandering her, talking about she was a Satanist or is a Satanist or whatever it may be. And they were completely appalled and basically wanted to, uh, wanted to shun her and not just shun her, but shun the whole, sounds like the whole Monday night lineup, which was, uh, you had Byron Donald. So you had a bunch of, you had a man from the Potawatomi tribe come and speak. You had Byron Donald's Wesley Hunt whole bunch of other black Republicans speak. You had a lady who was a legal immigrant and, and she was a legal immigrant, had a lot of legal immigrants speak. And so you had this barrage on social media of people who have fashioned in their mind what they think is righteous and appropriate and good. And what I want to say was, where was all the outrage when Paula White was the spiritual advisor to Trump and she was decreeing and declaring heresies all over the White House. I had every right and authority to declare the White House as holy ground because I was standing there and where I stand is holy. 
I not a peep from these same people, right? They have in their mind a picture of what conservatism is. And some of them, some of them think that conservatism is a synonym for Christianity and it is not. It is not. Now, the reason I'm talking about this because I find it, um, I, again, I am often, I, I am always suspicious of movements. I don't like movements. I don't like movements. Again, they necessarily have a charismatic leader in the center that is almost certainly worshiped by its follow by the people in the movement. Now, um, so as Christians, um, are there some Christians in the Republican party? Sure. Are there Christians who are, you know, um, in the MAGA movement? Sure. Should we be chanting Trump's name? Should we be idolizing this man? Should we be doing all this stuff? Talking about him incessantly, nonstop? Uh, it's, it's Trump or nothing and all the... I don't know. I'll, I'll leave the question to you. Here's the other thing as Christians. Should we be aligning ourselves and teaming up with unbelievers? Should we be? Because 2 Corinthians 6 tells us that we should not be. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean you can never interact with an unbeliever? No, absolutely not. In 1 Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians 5, Paul talks about how when he says you're not to eat with such a person, he's talking about people who basically are false prophets and blasphemers. And I'm going to ask a man who's a great man, actually, one of the great men of our country, Kenneth Copeland, to come up and say a prayer. <clears throat> who claim to be Christians, but they are not. And those are the people we should mark and avoid, but not people who are unbelievers, right? Because they don't know better. They're doing what unbelievers do in their sin. Why am I bringing this up? And I hope this is not too convoluted. The reason I'm bringing this up is because Amber Rose, if she is a Satanist or still doing OnlyFans or whatever the case may be, um, this this is a political conference, not a church service. And people are confused. In a political setting, it's perfectly appropriate for somebody to come out who used to be politically leaning one way and another way. But there is this purist gatekeeping thing going on in the, the conservative party, the MAGA movement, whatever, where they have said in their mind, these are the, the high value man people, the people who think it's perfectly normal to castigate women for their past and to, uh, there is no redemption with these, this group and there is no mercy and there is no grace. There is only, um, unforgiveness and slander. So now the MAGA movement is not the church. It is a political movement. Now our, and this is why I look at the policies and I don't get caught up in movements. I like to look at the policies. You can say whatever you want, but when it comes to brass tacks, what is, what policies are you putting forward? You don't have to be a Christian to think abortion is wrong. You don't have to be a Christian to think it's wrong for drag queens to dance in front of children. You don't have to be a Christian for those things. And the Republican party is not a Christian party. It is simply a political party who in theory votes for values that should align to a large degree with your Christian worldview that does not make the party the church and that does not make the party Christian. So is it appropriate to have atheists and Hindu and everybody else? Why wouldn't it be? All of the founding fathers of this country were not Christians. They all believed in a higher power as it were, or they all believed that they were accountable to a higher power. They all believed in the same, in, in the very, in same values but they were not all believers in Jesus. So I am saying all this to say what? Beware 
of people who are quick to shun you because you are not fitting into the mold of whatever they think the mold should be. Beware of movements. I've said it a million times already, but I'll say it one last time for the people in the back. Movements inevitably have a charismatic leader. And even if the leader is not asking for this, it's going to happen. It inevitably happens where the people who are in the movement start to um, worship the leader. And any movement where Christ is not The focus is going to turn into idolatry. I am voting based on policy. Do I agree with all the policies? Well, no. People, turns out, people are pretty three-dimensional. There are nuances to everything. In movements, there is no room for nuance. They often become purists. They often become very legalistic and very self-righteous about what they think is the right thing. Here's the other thing I want to say. This whole idea of who's allowed into the Republican club and who's not. Um, There are Catholics and all sorts of people in there that people are perfectly fine yoking up with and then getting upset when unbelievers are invited into the group. I don't understand this. So I would say, look at the policies And again, as I always say, beware of movements. So what do you guys think about this whole thing? Let me know your thoughts. Until next time, ciao. God bless.